You may have seen our video series on the age of the dinosaur, but if you haven't, here's how it ended. So what could even survive this event? What came after the age of the dinosaurs? Well, us, of course. The end of the Mesozoic Era gave way to the Cenozoic Era, the era that we're currently in right now. Turns out, while the beasts we've been exploring in this series had many benefits of being gigantic, it was actually the much smaller animals that would live to see another day. In particular, the Cenozoic Era is also commonly known as the Age of the Mammal. Mammals like us humans, we're mammals, as are squirrels, pandas, zebras, even whales. And it would all start in the Cenozoic's Paleogene period, with mammals like Hyracotherium and the Tainolabis. And that isn't to say we didn't see huge animals ever again, as mammals would later grow to great sizes, such as the Paraceratherium. But the world would never see the dinosaur kingdom again. As much as the age of the dinosaurs was such a fascinating time for life on Earth, the Cenozoic era was just as eventful and exciting, for many wildly different reasons. We've even covered many Cenozoic beasts already, from the Gigantopithecus to the Paraceratherium in our Largest Animals video. It's where we first meet many of the familiar species we share the world with today. And so, we thought it would be neat to take a further delve into the age of mammals and see where animals today, including us, got our start. Today, we'll be looking specifically at the Paleogene, a period of time spanning 66 million years ago to the beginning of the Neogene period, 23 million years ago, the first period of the Cenozoic era, and the one that happened directly after the extinction event that wiped out all non-avian dinosaurs on Earth. The KPG extinction event was so devastating, Earth would feel the effects of it for about 10 million years. Most life on Earth was gone. From land vertebrates to plants, even plankton wasn't safe. But as we know from our Age of the Dinosaur series, this meant new niches would appear for new life to take advantage of, and so the first appearances of the animal kingdom we know today would take shape. That's not to say dinosaurs didn't give up without a fight. Of course, we now commonly know that dinosaurs survive in our feathered friends, but the birds that survived the KPG were so ferocious, one group were even nicknamed the Terror Bird. The carnivorous flightless Sporus rachidae dominated Earth from 62 million years ago to just 1.8 million years ago. For context, Terror Birds dominated Earth 58 million years longer than the T Rex and Triceratops were around, evolving and adapting into as many as 25 different species. And that's no coincidence. Paleontologists called them the largest species of apex predator in South America and could have measured up to 10 feet tall. That's almost double the height of the average human. These animals were ravenous, with different species adapting to both scavenging and hunting. They had sharp hooked beaks, perfect for stabbing into prey, with claws to match, and had legs that seemed to be better suited for kicking rather than running. Paleontologists have even suggested hunting behavior such as banging its prey at the ground over and over again, something they see with the terror bird's closest living relative, the Ceremus. The KPG wiped out 75% of marine life, and just like life on Earth, it would take a really long time for life underwater to recover from such a devastating event. By the late Eocene Epoch 41 to 34 million years ago, we would even see not only some of the first whales, but the first marine mammals to swim the open ocean. Measuring up to 66 feet in length, the Bacillosaurus may have been the largest animal of the Paleogene, and just like terror birds were the apex predator of the ocean. That's not even the largest whales we'll get, with today's modern blue whale measuring up to 98 feet in length. But the Bacillosaurus had its own unique quirks. For a start, they practically had legs. The Bacillosaurus had hind limbs that even had three digits, possibly a leftover evolutionary trait. Their 14-inch limbs had very limited articulation. It's super unlikely that these legs were useful for swimming. More so, if they were used, it may have been to grasp at mates or for combat with other whales, similar to behavior you see in snakes today. These beasts had 58 vertebrae and were an anguilliform, meaning they had a body shape like an eel. And they did also have fins, although those fins also had elbows, kind of like seals today. However, their most frightening feature would probably be their pearly whites. Unlike whales today, who swallow their food whole, the Bacillosaurus had different kinds of teeth, such as canines and molars. And so these beasts probably ate 
pretty much like us, chewing and grinding on their food before swallowing. It is thought they could bite down with a force of 3,600 pounds per square inch, and some Basilosaurus fossils have even been found with large sharks in their stomachs. Paleontologists believe that these whales were predators rather than scavengers, targeting their prey's head with their powerful jaws before tearing them apart.